Hello and welcome everybody to our training for administrators today. My name is Sophie and I will guide you through that training today. First, we're going to start with the basic principle of Presono because that's very important to keep in mind during your work in Presono. Afterwards, we're going to go straight to the tool and we're going to have a look on the administrative functions of Presono right in the tool. So to start with the basic principle, I would first like to uh, start with the basic principle of PowerPoint. Why? Because like everybody knows how that works and it's a good comparison to use. Um, the basic principle of PowerPoint is like um, each presentation is a file and that file is like completely individual and completely um, not um, depending on any any other file. So if you take the presentation from the server or your from your colleague or anything, you duplicate the whole file, the whole presentation. So you create a completely independent uh, copy of that presentation. You copy the arrangement of slides, the slides themselves, the text on the slides and the images on the slides and everything is copied. So you can treat it completely independently without any connection to the previous presentation. Um, we, in Presono, we use a completely different um, basic principle. We use the so-called um, single source principle. So that's basically, um, basically it just means that each and every single content exists exactly once in the system. You can reuse it as often as you want to, but actually it just exists once. So uh, you might know that basic principle from, from services like Spotify. Um, Spotify is always uh, also in the same way. So you have one big container and each and every single song is in there exactly once. It exists just once, but I can take uh, from that big container the songs to put together my playlist. Um, and if it's, for example, my favorite song, um, I can reuse it like 10 times if I want to. But the song still exists just once. Um, in Presono, we use the same basic principle. So we have one big container of contents. So for example, slides or also media and te templates. And this container, uh, in this container, each and every single slide exists. Each user can then take slides from that container to use it in their presentation. But the content themselves exists still just once, no matter how often it's used. And the, the main benefit of that is that this allows um, a centralized management of data. So you can actually um, change the slide so if you exchange a video or text or update the numbers or anything like that, it will be updated in all the presentations that it, this, present, this slide is actually used because the slide itself exists exactly once in the system and that's centralized management. The centralized management um, also includes like images and all media files, documents, um, as well as, for example, templates. Um, the whole system itself, so Presono, is basically a live online uh, system. But so actually the only thing that you actually need to access Presono and your contents, your presentations, is a browser. We recommend the usage of Google Chrome because that's like the uh, latest version of technology, like on the latest state of the art of technology. But to be uh, independent of any platforms or internet connection, we actually offer additionally some applications. First of all, we uh, offer an application for your desktop. So this app um, can be used, for example, to work. So it's actually exactly the same as if you would use a browser. So you can create presentations, upload images, whatever. And then there are two applications, as uh, there are applications for your smartphone and your tablet. So those, um, those applications uh, were created primarily for um, presenting 
It's like the surface is too small to create some slides or anything like that. Uh, all the applications offer you an offline mode. So what does that mean? That means that you can actually synchronize your data to your cell phone, your tablet or your laptop. And um, you can use your presentations or create your presentations offline. So you don't need any access to the internet or a stable internet connection. Um, you can still use Prozono. Good, so um, behind all that, um, centralized management, the applications and everything, there is like a big, big system and we have uh, many, many features to offer. For example, we have a translation management so you can translate your presentations. Um, the central uh, thing about it is the content management and the centralized management of data in, uh, in essence, um, which I already mentioned. There are also some analytics to show you what content is used the most often and stuff, uh, stuff like that. You can also create quite fancy presentations because we have the possibility to include multimedia content. So from a video to iframes and image galleries, there are different, very uh, like a lot of options for you in your, uh, in your slides and presentations. Uh, what will be very interesting for us today is the user and access rights management. So you can actually uh, manage the um, permissions of your users. So not every user can see every content and can use every function of Persona if you don't want to, if you don't want them to. So to sum it up um, and to give you a short uh, background information, those are the elements that exist in Prosono and that you need in Prosono. Um, uh, I will quickly explain to you the single elements uh, so you have an overview basically um, about what we're dealing with today. So the first step that you need are actually templates. There are two different types of templates. First of all, we have background templates and we have some layout templates. Um, they are together uh, put together in template sets. Everything that has to do with the um, design of your slides will be done in the templates. So colors, positions, um, areas for text, areas for images, whatever. Um, this is all like done in the templates. Next step, you take a template and you fill it up with content. So you create actually slides. Um, and the next step, if you have created some slides, you can create your playlists, so your presentations. Once you're holding your presentation, you're presenting, you will create a session. A session is like exactly like an exact image of what you've just presented. So the system is tracking what you're showing and what you're not, what you might be skipping or adding some, some additional content or clicking on some buttons or whatever. And this will be saved as a session. In the session, you can afterwards share very easily, either as a session link or a PDF. So that's basically the process um, of a Prozono presentation. Why do I explain that to you? I explain it to you because actually in Prozono, you have the possibility to put um, in that process um, some roles again in other tools. Um, basically, the user is doing everything like at the same time. They're creating slides, they are designing the templates, they are uh, creating the presentations and arrange the slides and everything like that. So they do it all at once. Here, you have the possibility to use the permissions and the rights um, to put some roles behind that. To give you a short example, in the company using Prozono, the marketing team is responsible for the templates. So first thing, the marketing team is sitting down and creating many, many templates. Um, they are having an eye on it and uh, try to do it as conform to the CI or the CD. So everything that has to do with the design will be done by the marketing team in the templates. Next team that steps in action is actually, for example, a product management team. They will take the templates from the marketing team and fill it up with content so they can focus on the content creation and no longer on the design. They create many, many slides, filling up that content pool um, and 
focus on the content. Next team will then be, for example, the sales team. The sales team is then taking the slides, which are based, uh, which the templates are the basis for. Um, so they were designed by the marketing team and created and filled up with content by the product management. Uh, and the sales team can then focus on the storytelling. They can actually create their playlists, their presentations and focus on the storytelling because they know like the facts are correct because they were made by uh, their colleagues from the um, product management department. And the design is also conformed to the CI because that was done by the marketing team. So that's basically what you can do. You don't have to, but you can actually put roles in that process again. Good, so let's uh, go directly into the tool and I will quickly show you um, how that works. First of all, I'm gonna uh, show you how to use the structures in Presono because then uh, afterwards we're gonna have a look on the settings and the administrative functions of Presono so, um, to create that structures. So I will um, quickly show you how that's done. So. In here, in the content structure, a regular user sees like all the content that is available here and there are different tools to help the user either find their, their content or to um, save their content in a structured way. First of all, we have a full text search, so I can put in here a buzzword that I'm looking for. Uh, additionally, we have some filters. So like the naming is very important. Uh, additionally, we have some filters. You can use it instead of the search or in addition to the search. So um, those filters here are fixed. So those are the different types of contents that we have in Presono. We have the slides, so the single elements, the, those green ones here. And we have presentations. Those are basically the uh, playlists. Then we have template sets. Those templates are used for creating the slides. They are the basis for the slides. There is no slide without a template. And then there is different types of content like media and document files. Below that, we have some more filters and those filters are not fixed. Those filters, like those uh, things can be influenced by you and by us later on. Um, we have some workspaces. Workspaces are actually like really the space where the team it's coming together with the content. So that's really the space where they are working together. How does it work? That works um, that um, each content is saved to a workspace, exactly one workspace. Um, and on the other hand, the team, different teams, different user groups are getting permissions for each workspace. So they can have access to the content that was saved in there. That's how that works. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have a look on how you will um, give your users access to your workspaces and in the, the content in there. So you can individualize your workspaces and you can individualize categories. Those are the last filters, filters that I will show to you today. Um, filters are only for giving like, uh, each, uh, content, like, um, a topic. So to make them easier to find. So each and every single content in Persona has at least one category. To give you a short example, you might recognize, um, categories from stuff like Amazon. Amazon is in a very similar way. You have a product, for example, a cooking book for like um, a barbecue. Um, and either you will find that product by using the search or by the categories. And with the categories, it's like that, that um, the cookbook can be in different categories at the same time. So you can find that cookbook for barbecue um, either in outdoors, bestsellers, books, presents, whatever. Um, but it still is the one and the same product. So, um, and in Persona it's like that. It's exactly in the same way. Uh, it's just for giving the user the possibility to find 
their content, no matter what they're looking for. So if someone is looking for a cookbook, he can um, use the category of cooking or the search. Uh, if one is looking for a present, they can filter for presents and, uh, and so on and so on. So also the categories in Persona work in the same way. So they just give the content like a topic. So to make it easier, findable. Um, and also the categories can be influenced by you. So you can create the categories, delete the categories, uh, rename them. Um, so you can build up your own category structure. Good. And let me quickly show you how to use that categories. If a user uh, and categories workspaces and everything like that. I will just quickly upload an image just to demonstrate how that's used. To do so, I will click on the new button and click upload new item. And then I will click here to search for a file and I will choose the window file. I can now choose where to save it. So for example, in the global workspace and I need at least one category, I will use the um, portrait and background images and training. So I can save it now. The image will now be available here. I will click on it to open it up. And now I can see it's saved in here and with tagged with those categories. Um, so each and every single user that has access to the global workspace can now access that um, image if they have the right to use the uh, media files in there and um, they can use it in their slides. If I am now, uh, I don't know, I, I have another image, a newer image or, or uh, I just want to replace that one, I don't have to delete it and um, edit every single presentation and slide that this is in uh, this was used in I can just replace that image right in the database so I can say replace here choose another image instead of this one and say replace this image will now be uploaded and will um, replace every um, will replace like the window image now no matter where it was used before. So each slide from each user that used the window image now is using another image. So without anything more uh, than that. So um, now I can rename it because it's like, I just rename it because it's not no longer an image of a, a window. I can click save and that's basically it. So the image was actually updated so, and that's uh, basically it. So that's how you actually use your categories and your workspaces. So what we're gonna have a look on now are how to create those and how to use the administrative functions in general. For that, I click on the icon with the little gear um, to go to the settings. In here, we have different um, parts and we have different areas in the settings. Not every user is seeing each and every part. So some of them are just for administrators and you need the right to have access to it. Um, for, uh, for now, I will go quickly go through all the areas to explain what they are actually doing. And afterwards, we're gonna return back um, to the users groups and workspaces as well as categories and languages to um, and I will show you using a little example how to use those ones properly. So to give you an example, so you know what you're dealing with. Good, so the profile settings, every user has that um, area in the settings. This is only containing, uh, it's only um, individual settings just for me and my users. They don't influence any other users in the system. I see here on my profile um, what workspaces I am in, what groups I'm in, what are my favorite presentations. Down here, I can set some um, settings for myself. For example, UI language. 
The UI language um, can be chosen between German and English, and the whole UI will be displayed then in the other language. Um, the next one is the preferred content language. Um, here I can also choose between German and English at the moment, um, because only those two languages allow are allowed in my system for content. Um, we will come to that later on in the language part. Um, this just shows, uh, this just uh, sets down what language is my content shown in. Um, when Once I open up, for example, a presentation, will it be displayed in English or in German first? So I can switch it later anyway, but uh, this will show which one is my preferred language. Next thing will be the slide transition effect. So between the slides, which transition effect do we have? It's not choosable for every single slide anymore because the slides can be used in different presentations now. So I choose uh, one effect for me and my user. I can change it right here in my settings. Uh, the enter menu on the right hand side, um, uh, during your presentation you stay flexible. You can use the enter menu for adding some additional content to your presentation without leaving the presentation. So you normally click on the enter button on your keyboard, but if you're using a touch device, which is of course also possible, you don't have a keyboard. So then you can just click on the left or the right um, edge of your screen. And here you can just choose if it, whether it should be left or right. Good, let's go to the next area. The next area will be the kiosk mode. The kiosk mode is a special mode, presentation mode, um, which was uh, designed for fairs or sales events, for example. I can activate the kiosk mode here for me and my user. I don't influence any other user in the system by doing so. The kiosk mode uh, just um, works like that, that every presentation that I start from now on with this user will be played in a loop, so in an endless loop, so I cannot drop out of the presentation at the end. Um, this was designed especially for fairs, so my fair uh, visitor cannot access, uh, like exit my presentation on my screens, for example. So they just continue uh, do, uh, through the presentation in a loop. Um, with a kiosk mode, once you activate it, there are some more options possible. For example, uh, auto reset of the presentation after uh, special timing. So when your um, when your fair visitor is leaving, like the terminal. Um, also autoplay of the presentation, or for example, a pin code for the kiosk mode. So um, even if your user uh, is able to access, uh, exit the presentation, um, there will be a pin code needed for really like ending up ending the presentation. I will now deactivate the kiosk mode again because I don't need it for now. Good, the next area is like um, the users area and this is an area especially for administrators. Not every user can see this. This is the area where I can see all the users in my system. I can add some users, I can delete some users, I can reset their password. That's no problem, I just click on the three top menu, I can delete him, use uh, reset, or I can edit, for example, the mail address or anything like that. The next area will be the groups. So those are the user groups because the single users have to be in the user group to get se uh, several permissions. So that's just to make it easier and easier and manageable because with 10 users or something like that, it would be possible, of course, to manage each and every single user on their own. But it makes it a lot easier to put them together in groups once you have a bigger team. So in a big company, it will be a lot easier if you can have groups for presenters, editors, creators, or for example, for teams, for a trade fair or something like that. So you can put users in groups. Uh, a user can of course be also in more than one group. The rights will add like add on to another. So the higher right is always the one that works. 
Um, and the workspaces is the third part for the permissions. So users, groups, and workspaces, they are like connected. Workspaces are like the workspaces that we've seen in our content structure. Um, this is where you create some um, workspaces. You can access them. You can change the rights and the permissions in there. Um, we will return to this part um, later on with a small example. So I can show you how to demonstrate you how to use this one. Categories. Um, the categories in Persona are the categories that the users will see in their content structure. So, and this is also what they are going to see when they're saving new content, no matter if it's a slide, a presentation or an image. Um, here you can add some categories, you can move them, you can delete them, you can rename them, you can translate them or anything like that. We're going to return here again, uh, also with a small example later on. The languages is the part where you can create content languages for Bosono. So if you add another language here, content in Bosono, so for example, slides can be then translated in that language as well. So they can be um, uh, flagged with that um, content language. The last part that we're going to have a look on because the account is just for self-service and it's not part of today. It's just about like the accounting and everything. The last part will be the configurations. Um, the configuration is also only accessible for admins. It's a special right to be able to access this part. Um, for the configuration, you can configure actually the system the platform a little bit um, containing uh, and concerning different areas, for example, the fonts, the colors, the slide transitions, the styles, and the company is like a bit of branding. We're gonna go through all these parts right now to give you a short overview of what's possible in here. Afterwards, we're gonna do the examples for this and that. Good, so the first part in the configuration part is the fonts. First of all, we have the font size. In your template, you normally fix a font size. So you say, okay, my, um, my headline is exactly that size. And normally the user cannot change that in their slide. So this has to do with the appearance of the slide. So it's done in the template. But you can give the permission for that area. So for example, for the headline, to uh, give your users the possibility to change the font size a bit in the slide. So you say, okay, that's my uh, headline, it's that size, but my users can choose uh, later on another sizes. And those sizes are to be seen here. So you say um, it's possible for them to use uh, 50, 90, 110, and 150% of what I actually said should be the size in the template. You can change that, for example, put away those two and just say, okay, they can make it a little bit bigger and a little bit, sm bit smaller than I said it should be. When I click save, now all the users can only choose those one. The next part are the system fonts. There are some fonts that are coming with Personal anyway. So we deliver some fonts. You can use them, just use them. Um, and you can either disable all of them or you can enable all of them or you can even choose single ones. So you say, okay, I don't want, I want this one, but I don't want that one anymore. Clicking save and that's it. Uh, don't worry, Once, if you used that font in the past, the slides, presentations, everything will still be displayed correctly. It's just not possible to create a new template or to change a template to this font that you're uh, just disabled. If you don't want to use the system fonts, you can also upload your own fonts. Click uh, here on add a new font and then you need a WAF file to create some, um, 
to, to upload your own font families. You can um, then upload different variants of this one. So you can choose from different styles in your templates. So this is about the fonts. The next part we're going to have a look on are the colors. In Posono, you can have the possibility to preset some colors. Um, so you can add here a new color, for example, uh, use, I don't know, blue, purple, and or you can use the hex code, the RGB code, anything like that. I will just um, purple, um, and then I click save. That's basically it. Now I created a new color. You can add here your CI colors, CD colors, for example. What's the benefit of that? Uh, on each and every single station in the system where you can choose from a color, for example, in the template for the font color or the, the a frame for an area or something like that, or the color of an area, you will then, you will then have those colors as preset colors. So you don't have to look uh, up the hex code and everything each and every single time that you are, uh, will need a color. That's kind of um, convenient. The next part are the slide transitions. The slide transitions are uh, the transitions your choosers, uh, your your users will be able to choose from here in the profile settings. So in here we can choose now. Slate, fi uh, slide, fade, or no animation. And in here, slide, fade, no animation. If I add cube, for example, my user and click save, my users will then be able to choose also cube in their um, transitions, like here. So you can actually um, configure what your users can choose from. If they didn't choose anything yet, there you can set a default slide transition. Like no animation is it right now. The next part are the styles. Here you can create um, a styling for elements in, in templates by using CSS classes and they will then be like also centralized. So if you create a style here, you can write it here with CSS and you use the classes in your templates, and you change something in here again, it will be changed also in the templates that you used it to. So actually it's kind of um, kind of uh, centralized as well. I will not create a new style right now. Um, this might be part of the template um, template training. So that uh, no, has nothing to do now with the uh, configurations, uh, the, the administrative functions of Pozzuolo. The last part, so what you can actually use it for is like you style elements or you animate elements in, in, in your templates and therefore in your sites. The last part is the company part. Here you can first of all um, say, set a sharing duration for your sessions and presentations. You can share your sessions and presentations via a link. And that link has, of course, a due date. And that due date can be chosen here. So the maximum uh, is now 14 days for all users in that platform. I can set it up to 90 days or something like that. And then each and every single um, link will be from now on 90 days um, valid and not only 14 days. And the last part down here is the company part. You can uh, uh, customize a bit the appearance of the tool. Uh, by that, I mean the sharing session um, UI and the enter menu, for example, and the end screen of your presentation. You can see it right here as a small preview. You can set the main interface color. It's like that right here. And you can, as you can see, I could now choose the purple one. And you can choose the logo background color, like that. And uh, of course, a logo. If you don't choose anything, that will be just the Presono logo. So this one is the 
shared view. So you style the buttons and the background here and also the logo and the background color. So in my case, I just set it back to like this one and you can save it. Why can I style this one? This is because this are these are areas that your customer, your viewer, your audience might see sometime. So therefore you can brand it a bit to your um, company. So that's it about the configuration. So here you can configure your system a bit, like uh, set some things. Um, now we will continue with the short examples for the permissions management, the categories and the languages afterwards. So the first thing to do in my case is inviting users. So therefore, each time I will invite a user and I have a license left, I can uh, add a user right here. For that, I click to users and then I navigate to the new button on the right upper corner. And then I just enter the email address. So John Joe. The names will be then automatically taken from the email address if uh, possible. And I could also choose already a group, a user group here, but I don't want to right now. I can also add another user and another user or delete them if I don't want to. Um, once I'm done, I click save and the user will um, then receive an email from account at cosuno.com, um, which he's asked to um, set a password so they can activate their users. By now, the, those two are just invited, but they haven't actually um, activated their users, so they haven't clicked on the link yet. So that's the first thing to do, to invite your users. Next thing, they will need some um, groups. So put together your users in user groups to make it like, um, to, to make it possible to give them some permissions. There is already the administrator group and there are three people in there. Now I click on the new button and create a new team, a new group. So I will create now the marketing team. First of all, I have to choose some members. There are no members now, so I click on add users and I will choose Jane Doe and Mr. Mustaman. Those two are, for example, my marketing team. Once I'm done with the members, I will have to give them access to a workspace. If I don't do so, they won't be able to see any, any content because they don't have access to any workspace. And in the workspaces, there are the contents. So now I choose different workspaces. So I add them to a workspace, for example, to the global workspace. I can also do it like that, global workspace. And now I can choose their role in there. So this is the global workspace and their role in there is like that. So there are some preset roles that you can choose from either administrator, presenter or creator or an analyst or you can customize your rights as you would like to. Those are just to choose from. Administrator is very uh, popular, for example, so I can see the marketing team is administrator in the global workspace. Um, if I customize my rights, I will be able to change the all those um, rules right here. So just to give you a short uh, explanation, we have to choose now which right should be the marketing team uh, have in the global workspace. And we have to choose this for the different types of content. First of all, for slides, then for presentations, also for template sets and for media and document files. So we can steer that like uh, separately. We can control that separately. The rights are like adding up 
uh, like we're going higher and higher. So I will explain it to you uh, as using the, the example of slides. So if there are any slides in the global workspace, the marketing team would now be not able to see them. They don't know that there are slides existing in there because they don't have access to it. Once I put it up right here to reading, they will see the slides in there. They will be able to use them in their presentations. They can even duplicate the, the slides to another workspace, for example, to their own workspace, for example, um, but they cannot edit or create or delete anything. So they know there are slides, they can see them, but they cannot edit anything. This will require the next step. So they will need the edit right. Now uh, they can see the slides and they can edit the content on there. So they can open up the slide and change, for example, the text or the images on it. But I can still not create any, any, um, any slide in there. Next will be the creating right. So now the marketing team is able to create their own slides in the global workspace. So you can create um, your slides based on templates, of course. Um, they, and when they say, okay, I create a slide and when they click save, they have the option to choose the global workspace now. And the highest right that you can ever have in Prosono is the right to delete. Why? Because of the centralized management. Because when you delete a slide, it will be gone. It will be gone from the whole system not only like the site itself, but also all the uh, everywhere in every presentation where it was used, it will be gone. So, and then I have to choose the same things for uh, the presentation, templates, media files, documents. So media files, for example, now they can see it and even use it in their slides. Now they can update it and uh, replace it they can upload new files and they can even delete files that are in there. We have some additional rights for that workspace, for that user group. For example, manage workspaces. In that case, it means that this right allows the user or the group to see or edit the workspace in the settings. So they can actually click here on workspaces and we'll see the global workspace and they can access this part put together some members and access rights. Also, they can allow, uh, you can allow sharing. So the user group will then be able to share slides, presentation, uh, presentations from that workspace. And also you can allow them to see all analytics and all sessions of that workspace. In our case, we would like to have the marketing team as administrators for the global workspace. Additionally, they will need the demo content workspace also as administrators, please. And then they will have access to my workspace, but I just want them to read their content, the content in there, because there might be some templates or some, some media files that they will need, but I don't want them to save anything new or a slide or something like that in my workspace, because that's my workspace. I just want to have them to, to read it and to use it. So once I'm done with the workspace access, I will now have to give the marketing team some global rights. Global rights can only be given for groups. So this group can, for example, have the settings management. So this is the administrative part. So they can access the account settings in here they can create own workspaces. They can access the configurations, the categories. All They can manage all users, groups, and workspaces. And they can even um, edit the languages. So all those check marks are like giving them access to those parts in here. Additionally, um, we have some advanced features. We have some advanced features, for example, that this user group can send group notifications uh, in the notification part. Not all users can do so. 
they can also have the access to all analytics and all sessions in the parts right here. This might be uh, interesting, for example, for administrators or like analysts that or controlling that they want to control like um, what content is used the most often, what users are uh, very active, which ones are not, and so on and so on. And the last part is the customized layout. Um, this part is only a feature for, uh, we recommend it only for very advanced users because, and for a later stage of the rollout phase, because, um, actually the templates in Prosono are centralized. So, um, each template exists exactly once and you can reuse it for creating, I don't know, a hundred slides. But if you change then something in the original template, it will be changed, for example, the, the color of the headline, it will be changed in the slides too. So it's actually centralized. So if you can control the slides by controlling the um, template. By using this feature, customizing the layout, the users will be able to customize their slides. They don't have to follow the templates anymore. They choose a template, create a slide, and then they can customize it. So they can add some uh, areas, they can delete some layers, they can um, set the colors, the fonts, the sizes, everything on their own. So on the one hand, um, there is a problem that uh, they have, uh, there is the, the topic that they should be uh, familiar with the template editor. So a template training should be, uh, is rec recommended. And on the other hand, you have the problem that by customizing the layouts, they will completely um, disconnect from the centralized uh, layout management, so from the template management. So if you change then something in the original layout, it won't be changed in those customized layouts. So actually, um, just for advanced users and or user groups. Good. Once I'm done, I have created a member, uh, a user group. I have added the members, gave them access to different workspaces and set their global rights. Now I'm done, I click create and I've created the marketing team in here. Next group I'm gonna do is the sales team by giving a group name. I will add, um, Claudia and John Doe to the sales team. They should have access to the workspace, global workspace, but uh, only as presenters because they should create their own presentations but only see the rest. They don't need uh, templates, for example, because they cannot create their own slides. So they don't need temp to see templates because they cannot use it. The next workspace they will have access to is the demo content, but also as presenters. And the last thing is they will get access also to my workspace, but only as analysts. So now I'm done with the workspace access. They don't need any additional global rights because they're not administrators. And then I click create. And that's how quickly you create a new um, team. So actually now we've set the users and the permissions. Uh, there is also another way around, so you can also create some workspaces. So if you need a new workspace, just click on new, give the workspace a name, for example, marketing uh, content. And now you can add also from here, a new uh, group. So for example, a whole group, the marketing team, they will be administrators because it's their workspace and a single user or a group sales team, for example, can see. Now I click save and I've created a new um, workspace. So, um, now I have the possibility to check my, my settings. For example, I can now see, 
Okay, who has access to my global workspace? By clicking it, I will see, okay, administrators, marketing team, and the sales team. So the administrators have administration rights, also the marketing team, and the sales team is presenter in here. Uh, additionally, to the normal workspaces in here, as you are uh, administrator, you can also um, change the settings for the personal workspaces. Each user has a personal workspace where only this user has access to. So, um, for example, I can change the permissions in the Claudia's workspace. So, in here we see there is just that user and he or she is uh, administrator in here. But you can still change that um, anytime in here. Um, for example, sometimes you want to configure the personal workspaces like that. So to give the user all the rights that they need so they can create slides, presentations, they can upload their own images and files, they can share it and everything but they don't have access to templates because I want them to use my templates, the uh, company-wide templates. So sometimes you would like to do it like that or even um, turn off the media files because I don't want them to upload their own images but to use my images, like our images. Good, so this is basically uh, how you configure the permissions in the system. So you have the users, you invite the users, then you will add a workspace uh, and then you will add some groups. Um, the user groups are um, the perfect space to uh, set and configure your um, permissions. For all of that, there is no wrong or right. Um, you will have to build in your um, working structures, your um, your workflows and everything. So actually there's no wrong or right and you will have your content and your users and your teams and your workflows to build in Presono. You can easily change everything afterwards. So you can just go here and, and change the role of the marketing team in the demo content workspace to a presenter or a creator. Um, so it's that easy. So. Just create your own things. I hope I could uh, could have given you um, a bit of guidance how you can actually use it and to make it a bit clearer how to use that part. So the last two topics we're gonna have a look on with a short example is now the categories and the languages. So first of all, the categories. The categories are the categories that the users will see actually in their content structure. And they are just, um, created and managed here. So you can add just a new category right here or here. So the categories can have different layers. They can um, be structured in a way that you'd like to. So I can add a new category, for example, marketing content. I can even translate this one to German because uh, the users can choose their UI language and content language and then they will have displayed the right uh, translation of the uh, of this, um, these categories. Also, you have the possibility when creating a category to put that category into a workspace, to a dedicated workspace. You can only do so in creating a new category. Um, you can say, okay, I only want them to um, be used in the global workspace, for example. Um, anything like that. But if you don't put it to a workspace, it can be used from every user for content from every workspace. So a global category. But if you have like uh, just for the marketing team, you will use marketing um marketing categories, then you will, might uh, want to put them into the workspace. Once I'm done, I click save and I created a marketing content category. In there, I will need some more like, uh, I don't know, logos and 
um, campaigns. And for the campaigns, I will have campaigns for 2020. Um, and for example, for 2021. And for the logos, I have, for example, the possibility to um, competitors. So that's how I create my structure. And the users will have then the, the categories right here in the content area and can save their uh, contents too. Um, I can still change my categories. So for example, by clicking on that button, I can add uh, another language. So like that. And there is like now a translation of it. I can also move it. So move this category, for example, in here. I will move it and then it will be in here. Uh, I can also delete it. So for example, this category I can delete by clicking the X, but the system doesn't know if there is any content in there because any user can now have used it in the last five minutes uh, and saved some content in there. So I have to say, uh, tell the system what categories to use instead of the competitor category. So I will just use the training, um, or the, uh, in the marketing, just using the marketing in general. Choose and delete and my category is gone. So that's how you manage your categories. The last part that I'm gonna show you are the languages. Uh, in here, we will find the content languages available in that platform. So now my users can choose whether their slide is German or English right now. They can translate it to the other one. If I add a new language, I can uh, add another language for them to to, to put their um, their slides into. So first of all, I choose a language, so Italian, for example. Characteristics, I will choose a country, for example, Italy. And what language uh, this should be displayed in is like, um, Italian. Save it and now my users can choose whether to choose to their slide uh, in English, German or Italian. Uh, I can also add, for example, a language of uh, French and I can uh, choose here either France or for example, I can also use Swiss and In here, I will just put French and they will see it's Switzerland and even uh, I will put it like that. And I can also put French in here again as uh, with the flag of France. Um, good. So that's how you actually con uh, edit your content languages. Good. For now, we're done with the with the uh, administrative functions. As you can see here, um, we have created some different um, marketing content. We cannot see the marketing uh, workspace because we didn't put ourselves in there. So that's why we have not displayed it here. Good, so actually that worked. And uh, um, I just want to thank you for your attention. And that's it for the administrative training today. And have fun trying it all out yourself. So bye-bye.